Hi everyone, yeah, it's Henry the Computer Guy. I'm back with Excel. Actually, today we are going to talk about some functions. We have the sum, we have the average, we have the average, we have the rank, we have the VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and if statement. So specifically, the VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and if statement can do the same what? Under the same task. Let's continue. I'm going to be faster because I want to make the video short. So I want you to be following well, but I'm going to be faster. So here we can come and say equals, we want the total, we shall get that we call the sum. So sum of what? Of these what? Subjects. So we have our values here. Enter. The same case with this. And the summation. Now for each subject. Press enter, come and drag, we get our answers. Now we enter the average. Yeah, first because I want to focus on either some of these remaining four or three. These are very simple. Average, average of what? Of these four again. So we come and say drag. So position. Position. We use the rank. So if you want to get the position of any student in this, let's say in this class, we have to use the formula called the rank, such that it gives a number depending on the position of someone, depending on any maths that they have told you, either the average or the total. So for my case, I'm going to depend on the total to give the position of the student in the class. So we shall come and say equals rank. Double click on it. Tells us that we get the number. What are we basing on? I've told you that for my case, I'm basing on the total. So the first number in that becomes our number. So this is our number, which is going to be F what? F2, comma. Now, we come and say we have the reference. The reference means that we are going to refer to all those members in the, in the class. But remember, the reference has to be absolute. Absolute means that something is not going to be changing, such that whenever someone is dragging the formula from one of some other cases here, we don't move to some other empty spaces. So it is going to be locked from this range. That means that making something absolute makes it not changing. So onto your keyboard, if you want to make something absolute, press the function what? Function for onto your keyboard. Are we together? Press function for onto your keyboard because we have our range here. This is the range we are having. So what we do, we press function what? Function for. It will put dollar signs for us. So if you come to the formula bar here, we have F2, then dollar signs have been put on every range that we are making as the reference. Now, we put our comma. Sorry, undo. Come here. We put our comma. Then that means that we are going to pick the order. The order can as well be ascending or descending. So for my case, it depends on a question. But for my case, I'll need, let's say, I'll give the ascending. So we press enter. So it is going to give a position to all those members in class by basing on the total mark. So remember, I've said that we are basing on the ascending. That's why the smallest value here has been given one and the highest value into our what 281 has been given number 10 that is the ascending so now we are going to talk about the vlookup hlookup and if statement but those ones are going to be depending on the average so they have told you that you're going to use the average mark to give a comment to someone whether that person has failed or has passed on probation, or has really passed, but basing on certain average ma max. Now, onto my question paper here. I have the average as 0 to 49. I have another one which says that it is from 50 to 74. Then the last one is from 75 to 75 to 100. So now we don't have it here. Remember, we want to make this because 
we know that VLOOKUP depends on a table, so we have to make our box here as a tag, as a table. We make it, we give it borders. Are we together? Now, here we have a zero, but they have told us they want us to represent it like this, like this. But when we come and put it there, let's rub this one, it says 0 to 49. Do you see? Have you noticed a change? It is aligned to the left hand side. That means that it has become a word. In Excel, if something is aligned to the left, that is automatically a word or a label, then if something is aligned, numbers are always aligned to the right hand side. That means that this one is different from this. But we want to make it a number, but also having this. We are going to do that one under the number formatting, just called the number formatting. So I'll come and drop this thing I've put, then I'll put my zero. But I want to make it in this format. Let me be faster. So I'll come and click here. I'll right click. I'll come to what we call them formatting of the cell, formatting of the cells. So I'll come to custom. When I come to custom, this zero here is the one representing the numbers which are in that column have left in my box or table. Are we seeing them? These numbers. So this zero is the one representing those what? Those numbers in the in the cells I'm having. So what I'll do, I'll come to here where there is type. I'll leave a space. I'll open my quotes. I'll put 249. I close the quotes. So you're seeing here that my sample is telling me that you're going to be having in the cell that it's 0 to 49. Let me leave a space here to make it visible. So after that, I'll do what? I'll say OK. So it will put it here. So when you click here, under the formula by it is going to leave a zero, but here it shows you that it is 40 to 49. That is called number formatting. Let me repeat for this faster. Format cells, custom, come here, yeah. can leave a space, you can open the quotes, you put the space, then to 70, is it 74? Yeah. You put 70, 74, sorry, 74. You close your bra bracket. Remember, this one is not there. It's just a space. So it shows us that 50 to 70, what? 50 to 74. Then you say, it's okay. It brings it here. But here it puts 50 to 74, but under the formula, by it remains a 50. Then let's do it for this last one. I'll come to format. I'll come to this. I'll come to this. I'll leave a space. I open the quotes. Put that, put my dash, then I set to 100. I think now we are good to go. So we don't, we no longer need these ones. Are we together? So now we have our table because a VLOOKUP is based on a, ta on a table. So we shall come here and say, we are going to say VL. We want to put a remark, but depending on the VLOOKUP, V stands for vertical. So it is vertical lookup, lookup. So we shall come and say equals VLOOKUP. So when we click on the VLOOKUP, it tells us that lookup value, what are we basing on specifically? We are basing on the average because we have our average here. I'll click on the first number in the average, comma. I'll have what we call the table array. The table we are going to use is this one. I'm going to highlight from the figures we are having here without highlighting the, the, the words. Mind you, we don't need them. So we only use the selection that we are going to be using into our table. We don't need to highlight the, he the headings. So as I told you that we make something absolute, to make something absolute, you have to press a function for. So this table hurry has to be absolute, such that whenever we are dragging, it doesn't move to the next rows which are, or next columns which are empty. So I'll come onto my keyboard. I look for where there is function for. I press it. They are going to put dollar signs on it. That means that I'm going to column index, comma column index. So what I want to pick from my table here is in which column. So we have two columns specifically now: one and two. So I want to pick fail, probation, pass, but they are in in column what? Column two. I'll put a two there. Then. I'll put another comma. They are telling me range lookup. 
Range lookup has two options. We have the true and false. We have which is the approximate match and the exact match. So this one specifically is going to work for the numbers because we are going to be approximating from this to this. So we have numbers. That means I'm going to use that true. After that, I'll close my bracket, press enter. They're going to give me the answers. Simple as that. That one has been the VLOOKUP. But they can tell you to use what we call the H lookup to get the same answers. So what we do, let's make another table here. So we have what we call average. We have what we call comment. Remember, this table has been vertical. So we need something which is in form of horizontal for us to use the H lookup. So we have, let me just copy these ones. Copy. I come here, I paste. I copy this. I come here, I paste. I copy this. I come here, I paste. Because we already know how we can do this ones to be like that. Copy. I come, I paste. I copy. You can use the shortcut Control C, then Control what? Control V. Control C, Control what? Control V. Are we together? So you can make them appear well. So now let's make it in form of a table also. Are we together? That is it. Now we need to use the remark. We can add another column. Remark, but this one is going to be HL, meaning that it is horizontal look, look up. We come and say equals H look up. Now it is the which number are we basing on? Of course, again, it's going to be the average. Comma. What do we need? We need the table array. Here, we are not again highlighting the heading. So I'll begin from this. I highlight up to this. But make it absolute, remember, function for. Are we together? Then, comma. Now, this one becomes a row index, whereas this one becomes a column index number. Now, how in which row are we going to pick the words from? It is row 2, comma, because it is row 1, row 1, row 2, column 1, column 2. So, they are in row what? Row 2. If the, we had another row here and they were, the values were in row 3, we could put 3 where? Here, comma, then of course it is going to be approximate match. Then, close the bracket. It has to give you the same answers as the V lookup. Are we saying they are similar? Now, this one works the same as now we can make another remark, but using if. It has to give us the same. So, we know that we if is based on some condition. If you have two conditions, if you have two conditions, you need one, one what? One if. If you have three conditions, you need two if what? If statements. If you have three of them, three conditions, like that, like that. So, if statement is based on condi conditions, if I'm having these ones, we make them in the form of a table also. If you have two conditions, then you need one if statement. If you have three conditions, then you need two if what if statements. Now I come here. I'll say equals if. So we have the logical test. What are we testing? We are testing whether the average is, for example, 0 to 49. I can represent that as a less than or equal to 49. Not so? What will that person get? If it is true, it will be under the quotation. That person has to get a fail. That person will get what we call a fail. A fail. We close the quotes. Comma. We open another if because we have three conditions. One, two, three. We have three conditions. One, two, three. That means that if you are having three conditions, you need two if statements. We open another if. We again, what are we testing? The logical test. Is going to be again our average whether it is less than or equal to 74. Are we together? Come on, what will that person get? That person is going to get a probation. Are we together? You close it, then comma, 
That means that everything, we don't need another if statement because we have now two if statements, we have three conditions. So the rest will be put under the past. That means that if someone doesn't fall under this part, can fall in this part. If they can't fall in two of these parts, can as well fall in the third one. But so how many conditions have we used? We have used if two if statements, so we close twice. One, two, then we press enter. It gives us the same answer. Not so. Then we come and drag. So have you seen that they all, the three, give us the same answer? So we can put our information into borders if we need to. If you have asked to put them in borders, highlight them, then put them under the borders. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Has been this has been a wonderful lesson. Thanks for following. Hope to see you. Hope to see you next time. Hope to see you.